Yes, okay, good. Yeah. So we discussed yesterday this program, right? Uh, program to calculate grade of a student. This is our program. Here, program description, you can use multi-line strings. Then how to take multiple inputs in a single line. So we use input function. So whatever uh, input you are supplying, you are providing, by default it returns in the form of a string. If it is a, if you want to provide multiple inputs, right? Multi, uh, more than one input, that's separate with the space. So then you can use the split method. It returns a list of strings. From each string you are converting into float and then assigning into individual variables. That is the process. So now here, what is the criteria they have given uh, in this business use case? So in any of the subject, uh, uh, a student gets less than 35, he is failed. Otherwise, calculate the total value, average value. Now, according to this uh, average value, so the grades are calculated, grades are assigned, right? This is the use case. Now, first, according to this use case, you see if average is greater than or equal to A, uh, 60, then his grade is A. Else, else means it's not greater than or equal to 60. That means it is less, it must be less than 60. So now you check whether it is greater than or equal to 50 or not. Understand? Implicitly, that condition is already checked, right? So now assign grade B here. Else, if it is greater than or equal to 40, grade C, grade D, and then yeah. Finally, print the grade value. Okay. Now, just see the test cases, guys. First, I enter the marks 65, 68, and 72. So, M1, 65, 68, and 72. Okay. So, all the three uh, subjects, they are greater than or equal to 35, right? They are not less than 35. That's why control comes to the else. Calculate the total value, M1 plus M2 plus M3. 65 plus 68 plus 72, then calculate the average. Okay. So average will be uh, greater than or equal to 60. Yes. That's where rest of the structure is ignored. I told you, right? So this whole thing, it is a single unit of execution for your Python interpreter, right? This one. You see this, this is uh, an if else construct, right? This is an if else construct. So that's why if this is true, average greater than or equal to 60, then rest of the structure it is skipped because uh, this is your uh, if else construct, right? You can see the indentation. So this is a single unit. So that's why if it is greater than or equal to 60, ignore the rest of the structure, right? And grade is assigned to A. Now this print statement is part of out this else, right? Else. So this total part is else suit only. This total part is in else too. Again, in the else suit, we have if else, right? Again, this is a different one okay, inside the else. So now grade is assigned, uh, with, uh, A is assigned to grade and print the grade value. Understand? In this particular if else, nested if else, what is happening? Grade is calculated, right? Once grade is calculated, control comes out of this, right? This is uh, the immediate next statement. Okay, that's why you're getting grade is A. Enter the marks 45, 48, and 38. So obviously all the three more, uh, three subjects uh, more than 35, right? That's why control comes to the else. Again, total and average value is calculated. Now check the condition. Average is not greater than or equal to 60, obviously. You can see 45 plus 48 plus 38, it is not greater than by three, which is not greater than or equal to 60. Then control comes to the else. Now check the average value. It is greater than or equal to 50. No, that's why control comes to the else. Uh, again, greater than or equal to 40, yes. That's why grade is assigned to C and rest of the structure is ignored. And control comes out of this entire if else, uh, structure and it prints the grade value. All of you are getting just up there with the flow of execution base. Next one, enter the marks in three subjects, 12, 23, 34. Here you can see M1 is less than 34, right? That's why no need to check that two other subjects marks and it prints fail, rest of the structure is ignored, right? Grade is not printed because grade is the part of this else, right? Outer else. This is the outer if and out matching outer else. 
in the statement is a part of outer else guys okay so this if else is part of this is this else okay all of you are getting this is uh, your nested if else statement then the question is uh, you need to maintain the indentation for this uh, multi way selection nested if else statement am i right you, you uh, i i hope now you are clear how to uh, write the code for uh, multiple uh, uh, multi way selection control yes that's it yeah for example uh, i think you have solved the problems right assignment problems the assignment problems uh, there was a problem called share uh, stock broker commission calculation right so in that case what happens there are uh, several options right there are several options so it is also a multi way decision making statement then what happens uh, i can use this particular uh, nested if else statement for multi way selection right but you have several options then what happens several options uh, what happens this indentation is important in nested statements so that what happens a long series of nested if else statements can become too long to be displayed on the computer screen right if we have again more number of options right then what you need to do you need to maintain the indentation so that what happens the code is creeping towards right is it clear the code you, you have to maintain the indentation that's why the code is creeping towards uh, right side and too long to be displayed on the computer screen without horizontal scrolling am i right because if this code is creeping towards uh, uh, right what happens you need to use horizontal scroll bar yes so then what happens it is very difficult to read am i right without horizontal scrolling difficult to read as well as long statements uh, they are uh, very difficult to uh, scroll and uh, understand right okay so this is the problem this is the problem with the nested if else case understand nested if else if you have uh, several options then what happens you need to use this uh, indentation right you must uh, use the indentation so then what happens the code uh, it uh, the indentation moves to the right side right the code creeps towards right side then what happens guys then what happens the code readability is going to be decreased am i right code readability is going to be decreased this is the actually problem with the nested if else guys if you have more than 3 uh, options right if you have more than 3 options and you are using this nested if else then what happens code is creeping towards right side right it goes to right then what happens it is very difficult uh, to read and all so that is called readability problem guys so that we have another type of structure that is elif class so both nested if else and elif class logically they are equivalent how they are logically equal equal i will prove that but the syntax is different guys understand why because to make make the code readable more readable understand that's why we have the elif class all of you are clear guys if they want to check how good you have uh, knowledge in the programming language just they ask this question that's enough okay so for multi way selection already you have nested if else why we need elif class the reason is if you have uh, multiple uh, options right the multi way selection you need to use multi way selection so in that indentation is important so that what happens code creeps towards right then what happens the readability of the code is going to decrease is it clear that's why we use the elif class guys okay that's why we use the elif class and logically both these are same understand both are same in elif class what we do okay so elif class just simply what we need to do for this elif class guys elif class just is a rearranging of elif class uh is a way of rearranging 
just remember this rearranging rearranging the else with the if that follows right just what you are doing guys the way of rearranging the else with the if that follows it understand just rearrange else and if that follows right there is an else state there is an if statement uh, if uh, else is followed by an if statement right then just rearrange those that's it that is called a if clause guys that is called a if clause so this is also called as cascading a if guys this is called cascading a if what is the syntax of this one just as we have discussed if boolean expression boolean expression 1 right suit 1 suit 1 okay right alif boolean expression 2 boolean expression 2 right boolean expression 2 suit 2 what is boolean expression what is suit i think no need to explain right suit means a sequence of one or more statements as a single unit right single unit of a suit to again alif boolean expression 3 boolean 3 right suit 3 like that you have a uh, uh, n number of options guys any number of options no problem so alif boolean expression n boolean expression boolean expression n suit n suit n right again final else here you have else suit okay right again there is one thing is there what is that statement x any doubt in this if you have followed all my sessions then only you can understand guys understand now tell me what is the statement x the next statement after the immediate next statement that follows the if else else structure right what is the statement x guys immediate next statement next statement that follows that follows the if elif else structure right this is what elif class guys now tell me so what is the selection control statement in python guys if elif else this is the actual selection control statement in python guys understand but here all are optional except if if is mandatory guys remaining all are optional right so for example if you have only if some boolean expression and suit that is simply if structure right so you have one if statement and zero number of elif clauses and final else then this is if else structure are you getting guys whatever we learned understood so inside this suit if you have some if else structure that will be nested if else right finally this is the complete this this uh, selection control right if you have zero or more elif and zero uh, either else class may be present or absent right this is the actual syntax guys if you read the book whatever i uh, suggested in that they have given only this one but to understand this you need all this background knowledge right i hope now you can uh, answer any questions in the interview regarding this control statements so this is uh, how the flow of execution guys these boolean expressions are uh, evaluated from top to bottom guys top to bottom if any of the expression evaluates to true then what happens the rest of the structure it is ignored this total thing is a single unit right okay for example i will tell you one analogy so you want to purchase toothpaste guys what is your object what is your uh, 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 want to purchase a toothpaste right uh, you went to the supermarket went to one supermarket place understand so for example 
if a uh, toothpaste colgate is available right then what will you do immediately you purchase it you will be purchasing it and after that you you will come out of the supermarket right is it clear for example if colgate is not available then what you will do again you look for some other option maybe like pepsodent if that is also not available then what will you do you will look for some other one that is close up if close up is available what will you do you purchase it then immediately you will come out of the uh, the supermarket right if uh, nothing is available uh, then we have one Indi indian brand what is that guys very popular advertisement in my childhood days i would see dabar red uh, powder like that right there is no other option is there then what you will do just you purchase whatever there that is nothing but you are dabar tant manjal okay like that the same thing here also guys you have uh, n number of uh, uh, options here right n number of options if any one of the expression is true if any of this expression is true then the rest of the structure is ignored and the associated suit gets executed right if none of these expressions are true then this final else will be executed this is called default else case understand if none of the expressions evaluates to true this is the final one okay right but anyway statement x gets executed right from top to down these expressions are evaluated if any one of the expression is true the associated suit gets executed rest of the structure is ignored then control goes to the immediate next statement after this if else if else structure is it clear or any doubt this is the flow of execution guys the boolean expressions are evaluated from top to down okay if any one of the boolean expressions is found to be true the suit associated with it is executed and rest of the structure is ignored then control is transferred to the next statement that follows the structure okay so when else 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 suit gets executed guys if none of the boolean expressions are true then the last else class is executed guys understand this is we call it as default else class guys any doubt in this all of you are clear okay how both are logically equivalent i will discuss guys the same code i take the same code then i will prove that this is equal to if else if else structure right clear guys okay yeah you can use else if also guys actually you can solve any any type of selection control related problem using this structure understand you can use this structure guys i hope now you are clear how to use this structure now the same program i told you that nested if uh, nested if l nested if uh, else and as well as this if else if both are logically equal right how they are logically equivalent guys i will just tell you right the same code i will take and i will prove that both are equal guys okay yeah just let me paste this code right this is my nested if else guys to solve this business use case right uh, now what is uh, elif now you can see this code readability is not good right if we have three options that's okay for example uh, you can see uh, uh, stock broker commission problem i have given right if you apply uh, if you uh, just uh, write the code using nested if else you can see the code moves to uh, keeps towards right okay that is not at all uh, uh, readable right readability is not uh, good for that code if you use this nested if else right that's why you can use if else if else structure for that particular problem guys understand okay now let us see how they are equal so for example this is my code this is my code so what is this nested if else guys sorry uh, what is this elif class elif class what is this elif just see this just see the definition elif class is a way of array rearranging else with the if that follows right let us say there is else class and if follows that okay then you can rearrange both of them guys understand uh, then is it possible in this uh, uh, program or not that you start from the bottom understand you start from the bottom here is the else but if does not follow else right this is the last else is there any if here that follows the else no that's why you cannot do anything 
just leave it right now you go to the next uh, uh, top level okay here is an else clause and if follows the else right there are no other statements between else and if right then only i can say that if follows the else am i right now what you need to do according to that uh, rule rearrange the else with the if that follows it right here you have that type of uh, scenario you can see here is an else and if that follows right there are no other statements here that's why what i will do just i will use the backspace now you will get else plus if right so else plus if i write it as elif i write it as elif are you getting guys now again move to the next top level okay next level now you can see here there is a situation here you have else clutch and uh, if that follows the else understand else and immediately that is followed by if then what i will do just i will rearrange that is was a elif class guys understand now you have elif guys clear is there any else yes but understand here you cannot combine both of them because else is not followed by if guys else is followed by some other statements understand now can i combine this else and if no i cannot combine understand but this whole thing it is one single structure right this whole thing is a nested if else structure actually i told you that if you have a compound statement all the clauses of that compound statement must be at the same indentation level am i right if you have a compound statement all clauses must be at the same indentation so i will use the same rule and i will make it as same indentation just you can see else if at the same indentation level else is also at the same indentation level right okay that's it so if you wish you can make all the suits at the same level guys that's that's also good even though there is no error but uh, it is a good programming practice already i told you that there are some syntax rules are there there are some good practices are there this is the good practices now you compare the previous one and this one guys which code is more readable now tell me guys this one or that one i uh, understood any doubt this is the second version of the code now you see how good this one right how readable it's very clear right no creeping towards the right and all all are at the same level easily you can understand this code are you getting guys now tell me logically both are equal or not nested if else and elif both elif class elif if elif else and nested if else logically they are equivalent did i did, uh, did we uh, change any logic no right just we are rearranging else with if that follows it that's it we are rearranging that's it okay but what is the use of this one guys readability is good understand you how readability that is good i hope you are clear with this why we need this type this structure okay you must be able to answer in the interview somebody want to check how good you are at the programming language if they ask a simple question like this size that is enough guys okay so now you ask any <laughs> software developer or anybody who has got uh, uh, some experience you ask why we need this okay already we have nested if else for multi way selection control statement why we need again else if or elif class okay whether they are both are equivalent or both are not equivalent generally in some interview panel when i was there i i used to ask this question for fresher pro fresher sir somebody okay so i didn't get any answer guys many people i saw that they have four years experience five years experience as a developers but no one could answer i was very much uh, surprised you know that means they have no conceptual understanding to those guys okay so you will not become a professional programmer if you are not uh, learning scientific way right all of you are clear right now you can uh, just uh, try that code guys now uh, the same way you can solve the problem that is uh, calculating the fine late fine library okay so there uh, you can use elif clause and all i hope you are clear right any more questions 
yes i think this code is already available i have typed and executed just i will open so with this we have completed the selection control statement guys okay now using all these concepts we will write one program understand so that all concepts will be clear this is how you need to learn the programming languages guys understand so you need to learn the programming language why it is there why switch case is not in python that is next topic i will or i will just discuss just wait a moment let me show this code already have grade one i think this is the code yeah same code you can rewrite like this case okay so some description you can write like this i already told you right multi wherever required you can write guys don't think that in the beginning we should write wherever required you can write this is the documentation guys right same code you can see i changed this right you can uh, do that execute it okay guys this is one uh, business use case guys next one uh, i think i have uh, done this grade okay pickle series while demo expect distinct uh, vowels okay uh, yeah constructors demo discount okay to be yes yeah so now what you need to do is uh, you have to uh, try the rest of this one understand rest of the one now i will show you one uh, real time uh, application for this where we need to use all these type of uh, control uh, selection control guys okay just let me discuss that next day's date already this code is available just i will walk through the code guys okay actually i have given this one uh, as a pro exercise problem in it right so this is my uh, problem find uh, program to find the ne next date of a given date right next date of a given date guys this is the program understand so uh, uh, how to attempt this particular problem guys first one you know that uh, input logic you need to write so how many inputs are required only one input is required that is nothing but here your current date am i right current date here uh, you know date format is dd mm yy format we are taking date month and year right so understand guys i want to provide input in the form of two digits as date two digits as month and four digit as year understand so i need these individual values right date month year values i have to extract from this okay that's why i am using dot split slash understand in this example of grade calculation we are using just split method because by default what is the uh, splitting character guys space but you can specify explicitly what is the splitting character for the input so understand guys this is uh, uh, we are taking multiple values in the single line as an input right for example how do you uh, provide the input for this particular program guys so for example 9121996 let me first execute this code and show you uh, i will uh, just see this how do you provide this input guys for example 10 10121996 is the date what is the next day 10121996 this is the input you are providing right 10121996 so that's what the input function it returns enter the date you are entering like this it it returns in the form of a string guys within the single quotes now i need to get this date value month value and year value right how do you get this one so there is a separator right here there, there is a splitting character you are you are using for this input multiple values that is slash that's why i am using dot split of slash then what happens according this is splitting character to slash it will split this whole string right then you will get three individual strings one is 10 second one 12 third one is 1996 then what i will do i take each value from that list then type cast it assign it to the individual variables understand this is the task okay now let us uh, uh, write the logic guys what is the logic you can see what is the next date 
11 12 1996 is the next date perfectly all right yes what is the logic i am writing here first let us check month value guys if month is 12 right if month is 12 what you need to do okay if month is 12 then i have to check days right if month is 12 if this expression is true then only this suit gets executed right this is the if suit guys this is the if suit if uh, month is 12, then this suit gets executed, right? So here, what you need to check? Days. If month is 12, days are 31, guys. Day value 31. Then what you need to do? 1, 1, 20, 22. Then you will get 1, 2, 22. You can try it. I will copy paste this program. I will send this uh, uh, total file, OK? Now you see, guys, month is 12, day is 31. Then what will be the next date, guys? Next date will be New Year 1st, okay? January 1st of New Year. That's where what I am doing. Here, I assign date value 1, month value 1, and year should be increased by 1. Am I right? For example, 31st, 12, 2022, okay? Then check the month value. It is 12. Then what will be the next date, guys? 1, 1, 23, right? 1, 1, 20, 23. So how can you get it? How can you get it? Very simple. Check day is 31. Then assign day value one, month value one, year value is incremented by one. Understand? Okay. For example, if the date is uh, 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 15, uh, 15, 12, 2022, okay, what will be the next date, guys? 16, 12, 2022. Am I right? So, because the days are not equal to 31, so that control goes to the else, then it will add one to the day. Understand? That's it. You can print date, month, year. This is another form of the print statement, guys. Already we discussed two different form of print statements, right? First one, you can print a message along with a value. You can print uh, using the format specifiers, any float value and all. This is the third one using the positional parameter, uh, positional values, guys. For example, I need the next day's days in the form of date slash month slash year. Am I right? So here we are using this positional values guys understand first this one it is replaced by day next one will be replaced by month next one will be replaced by year understand this is one type of formatting using print just you run the code and see the output guys see the output next day is next day is 11 12 1996 how it is working guys you check first month value month value is 12 yes day is 31 no then control goes to the else Increment day by one. That's why you are getting 11. And you are printing day value 11 slash month value is 12 slash year value. These are the placeholders, guys. First value will be replaced by day. Next one will be month. Next one will be replaced by year. And this, whatever you use the symbols, there you will you will get as it is. Okay, this is the best approach. Year plus one equal to uh, year plus is equal to one. Yes, you can write it. There are many ways to write the code, guys. I am telling you the simplest way because I know that many learners are uh, the beginners. Okay, that's why I'm using this one. Okay, the same code you can write in multiple ways. Okay. Is it clear? Okay, guys. Yeah. That's it. This is my first one. Yes. My first one. Next. If month is not equal to 12, then what you, what you need to do? So matching elif, you can see. If this expression is false, the control goes to the matching elif class. Understand? So that's where control comes here. That means what? Month is not equal to 12. Month is not equal to 12 means there may be uh, different possible cases, right? Here, what I'm doing, just check if the month is... 1, 3, 5, 7, 8, 10. Understand? This logic you can write in a different way, guys. If month equal to 1, R, month equal to 3, R, month equal to 5, R, you can use the short circuit operator, R operator, guys. Right? Okay. Instead of that, you can make the code very uh, simple and readable using the in operator. In is a keyword, right? In is a keyword. So, month is a variable. If this value, it is present in this particular this is a membership operator. In operator is called a membership operator, guys. If this value 
if it is in this particular uh, sequence or in this list then it returns true otherwise it returns false understand guys in operator is a membership operator if this value if the value of the variable if it is in this particular list then it returns true otherwise false understand anyway in the else elif class or in if class we need a boolean expression that should return true or false am i right this one also returns true or false that's it understand that means if month is not equal to 12 but if it is any one of this then what i need to do actually 1 3 5 7 8 and 10 they have 31 days in the month am i right if it is january march and these months you have 31 days in that am i right that's why what you need to do first check number of days guys if days are 31 then the next day will be the first of next month that's why what i am doing i am assigning day as one increment month by one and print the uh, understood if day is not 31 then what you need to do just increment day by one that's it and print the next date any doubt very simple logic guys very simple logic okay once any of this expression is true then what happens rest of all the structure is ignored right rest of the, this whole thing is a single unit for the python interpreter it is a multi way decision making right this whole thing is a single unit if any expression is true then what happens rest of the structure is ignored and the suit gets executed then control comes out of the entire this structure that's it the same logic guys same flow observe the flow of execution is very important guys analysis of code and observing the flow understand if uh, the month is not in any one of this then control comes to it's matching next matching elif understand now you check if the month is 4 6 9 or 11 okay so for these months the total number of days are 30 right like april okay november these months uh, the they, uh, there are 30 days in that month that's why what i will do i will check if it is the last day of the month if it is the last day of the month then i assign one to the day and increment month by one if it is not not last day of the month then increment the day value by one understand increment day by one is it clear okay yes so uh, yeah you can just uh, uh, do that one understand here printing is missing right i think i have i have to use this print state state is missing by mistake i think it was deleted any doubt okay if this expression is a false that means a uh, month is not in 1 3 5 7 8 10 and 4 6 9 11 11 right then what will be the month value guys it should be 2 understand why i am taking this as a separate case because leap year we have a condition for leap year right okay that's why what i will do i will check the leap year condition here you can see guys i have used all our logical operators and or not all the logical operators i am using it is very simple logic guys if any year which is divisible by 400 that is a leap year understand this is one 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 case otherwise if the year is divisible by 4 and it is not a century understand any year which is not divisible by 4 that is not a leap year we know that but any year which is divisible by 4 you cannot say that that is a leap year centuries for example the centuries which are not divisible by 4 they are not leap years for example 700 1700 bc let us suppose 1700 bc is it is not a leap year even though it is divisible by 4 understand any year which is not divisible by 4 we can we can say that it is not a leap year even though it is divisible by 4 we should check that it is not a century understand it's not a century this is the simple logic how i am implementing guys either this expression is true or this is true then it returns true because it is an or operator guys or operator what is the thing either this this expression is true or this expression is true it returns true that's why first it will check this condition understand uh, again this is you can check here i am using and operator right that's why it, this must be true as well as this must be true okay that means i am using not operator right not year mod 100 equal to 0 that means if it is not a century and as well as it is divisible by 4 right then that is a leap year 
otherwise it is divisible by 4 but it is a century then what happens this condition is false then you have to check this one understand for example 1600 1600 guys in this case what happens divisible by 4 but it uh, uh, it is uh, also divisible by 100 am i right 1600 century this expression is true but this is not true then what happens this total expression will be false so that i will check this one so here mod 400 is zero yes this is true then what happens the total expression will be true understand how to check a leap year guys first we need to check whether it is divisible by 4 and not divisible by 100 understand or else if it is divisible by 400 then that is a leap year so if you wish you can use a nested if else guys for this you try to write it somewhat uh, you will get uh, more lines of code instead of that if you use the logical operators you can make it in a simple line all of you are getting otherwise you can refer that whatever it is that's why i have discussed in a sequence all the topics of the selection control you should be very clear got it guys in case of leap year when this will be true if it is a leap year then i need to check whether there are 29 days or not if it is 29 days then day equal to one increment month by one or else increment day by one understand so if it is not a leap year then what you need to do check days 28 understand guys in if month is two there are two different cases whether it is a leap year or a non-leap year if it is a leap year check the day value if it is 29 increment that month by one assign day one if it is not 29 day increment by one understand if it is not a leap year then check days are 28 or not if days are 28 increment day by uh, sorry assign day by one and increment month by one or else increment day by one just print the value if all these conditions are false then what what does it mean if my, uh, if this expression is also false this is also false you can see there is one if then followed by one or more else if final else why is this final else is required guys user intentionally he may enter wrong date right for example uh, uh, 13 uh, 20 2022 is it valid guys no right because of maximum how many months in any year 12 months like that intentionally if he enters a wrong value the final else will be executed guys this is the default else if all these expressions are false final that means what the user entered invalid date that's why final else gets executed this is the complete if elif else structure guys any doubt in this if you have doubt you should analyze and run the code and check all the uh, test cases guys this is first test case i will run the second test case guys 28 to 1996 28 02 1996 right now what is the value Eighteen to 1996. Oh, no. I think there is some logical flaw in that you need to check it. If month is two, okay. I think we are not printing here, that's why. Got it? You are not using print, right? After incrementing this one, what you need to do? You have to print it, right? That's it. I hope in this program we used almost all, all our selection control syntax and all, right? Why you have given a day one and month one? Because uh, uh, every month uh, it has uh, some maximum number of days, right? Uh, if it is, uh, uh, let us suppose this month, what is the last date, guys? This month, uh, what is the last date? 31st. For example, the date is 31st, 6, 31, 6, 2022. What is the next date, guys? Next date, day should be reset to one, right? Next date will be first of next month. That's why every time I am assigning day one and month incrementing by one. Got it, guys? You can see what will be the next date, first of next month in the same year. Clear? Okay. Just think logically. Think logically, you will get the output. Everything is logic based, guys. Your logical thinking is not uh, very, very important, guys. An IIT degree is not required for a software programmer. Understand? Only logical thinking is required. And uh, the companies need only those people. <laughs> they don't bother whether you are uh, a degree from IIT or not. Understand, guys? You know the company? Caterpillar. Have you heard this company? Banking domain. Caterpillar. Anybody working in Caterpillar? 
they recruit uh, freshers from iit guys but many people they get selected not only from iit also okay for freshers they offer 40 lakhs i think first round is the coding round you try in caterpillar top banking domain okay print statement syntax you can, see, you can see guys what is the output here 18 those are positional values we call it as okay how you are getting the output just check it that's it output i need date slash month slash year right okay i need this format guys that's why i'm using this one understand that's why i'm using this one guys Yeah, here you can see now just uh, understand through this uh, output, uh, whatever output you got it. You see here, next date, this message, I add, this will be printed as it is. After that, there is, these are called placeholders. These are called what, guys? Placeholders. Open base, closed brace, without any uh, space here. This is called placeholder. This is the placeholder, first placeholder that will be replaced by first variable, day value is nothing but 19 understand after that i need a symbol right slash that will be printed uh, on the screen after that this is second placeholder that will be replaced by second variable value understand again slash this is the third placeholder this will be replaced by third variable value now i hope you have understood this is another type of syntax case you want to print some message some symbols some variable values and all then it is preferred understand so these are called placeholders. Understood, guys? This is called placeholders, guys. So earlier we used two types of syntax. One is format specifies. Here is the placeholders. You can use combinedly. You can use placeholders, format specifies, as well as everything. Understand? OK, these are the three important uh, uh, structure of uh, uh, this print statement, guys. Understood? OK. Uh, yeah, what is the output, guys, you are getting? You can see. 19 to 1996. That is the next date. Okay? Right? So, 31st 12, 1996. What will be the output? You can guess. 31st 12. If I give 31st 12 as my input, guys. Then, uh, New Year first date I should get, right? 31st 12, 1996, guys. What is the value? 11, 1997. Perfect? Okay? 11. 1996. Okay. Uh, sorry, 1997. Clear, guys. So, 1996 is a leap year, right? Why I'm taking this example is that is a leap year. That's why. Okay. For example, 28th is the day and second month. What will be the output, guys? This is a leap year. You should get 29. Right? You are getting 29, right? Okay. So, like that, you need to check all possible use cases, guys. Understand? For example, I will give invalid math month. Then what happens? None of the expressions evaluate to true, right? For example, date is six, but month is 15, guys. Month is 15, and the year is 1996. Now tell me what will be the output, guys? None of the expressions are true. Am I right? If we just do this, none of these uh, expressions will be true. The last else gets executed, which is invalid date. That is obvious. You can see, is it valid date or invalid date, guys? It is invalid date, right? Enter it. You see, invalid date. This is in the default else. Understand? If none of these expressions are true, you will get this else suit executed. Understand? That is invalid date, obviously. Okay. Yes. Any questions? So that's all about the selection control statements. Almost I have given uh, uh, 10 assignment problems. 10 assignment problems in this, okay. 10 assignment problems, almost all I have given uh, on uh, control statement, only selection control. There are different types of uh, use cases are there, guys. Every example, there is some illustration you need to get, understand? That's why I have framed that type of uh, problems, guys, okay? Now you attempt those problems, guys.
you get any uh, uh, any difficulty you have then i will uh, just uh, uh, clear your doubts that okay library late fine and all you can uh, do that one understand so with this we have finished the selection control with all concepts logical things whatever we need to learn okay so now the next question is why there is no switch case statement in python guys that is the question can anybody answer these are all self learning activities guys you should uh, enhance your knowledge self learning okay we have taken last month as a separate last month separate where is the last month i am not getting your question yeah before that just a use decrement that's it you will get before that same logic but inverse logic okay just decrease that by one that's it you check all this right that's it if you have the logic right you can play with like that somebody is saying that previous state just use the same logic but this time you need to decrease right the conditions they change that's it remaining logic almost same right okay yeah next logical question why there is no switch case in python guys that is the next question okay yeah then why there is a switch case in java that is the next question can anybody answer this these things are uh, very very important guys you are uh, applying for top notch companies right they will uh, just focus on this very important logical aspects because everyone uh, they learn programming everyone they copy paste and do that they know but they need somewhat creative and analytical brains understand to check their anal analytical uh, knowledge and uh, understanding of a programming they just uh, they ask one or two questions that's it okay yeah right now i will uh, just tell you why there is no switch case in python guys so actually whatever logics you can write with switch case you can write with if elif else first thing understand if you can solve any type of business use case regarding the selection control using if elif else okay why there is need of again another statement not required am i right whatever logics you can write with switch case same logics you can implement with if elif else can you say any program which you can solve with switch case and break and you cannot solve using if elif and else can anybody you cannot understand you cannot that is the first reason whatever logics you can write using the switch case and break same logics you can uh, uh, write with if elif else then why we need another uh, one more keyword and all uh, one more syntax and all unnecessary right that's not required second thing using if uh, elif else you can combine multiple conditions right you can combine multiple conditions right but you cannot do using the switch case guys you cannot do using switch case guys understand and uh, these conditions you cannot check using switch case also understand guys for example you have a floating point value there is a variable which is a float value right i want to check this condition guys if uh, x greater than or equal to 3.5 and x less than 7.5 right this is the condition i need to check guys right can you 
implement this in switch case guys checking of this expression and doing something i want to do just something okay right can you implement this logic in switch case guys can anybody who are in industry working <laughs> this is one use case where you cannot do understand whatever you can do like write the logics using if because between 3.5 and 7.2 how many values are there infinite values can you write our infinite switch cases guys for example if i use some uh, uh, old uh, old numbers you may say that sir those many use cases i will write switch cases i want to check whether a variable value is between 100 to 200 right if it is an integer value you may write 100 uh, switch cases that's good but if you want to check whether a value it falls within a particular range of 3.5 to 7.2 can you write these many switch cases guys is it possible this is where you cannot write the logic using the switch case understand whatever logic you can implement using the if elif else you cannot implement with the switch case guys but whatever logics you can implement with switch case you can implement using if elif fails that's why there is no switch case and in python guys that is the reason then why there is a switch case in uh, switch case in java that is the question those are who do who are java developers can you answer this guys everything there is a meaning guys without uh, meaning they do not do because of programming is languages are used by many developers in software development then there is why there is a switch case in java and other programming languages can anybody can anybody yes yes because i told you right java they adapted from easier to debug what is the problem with if else if else guys any difficulty in debug nothing nothing right debugging is very easy if if uh, this code is like this okay actually switch case right uh, it uh, it is somewhat uh, fast compared to the if else if else structure understand guys why it is uh, very fast there is an internal thing is there okay internal optimizing is there in uh, that one there is a reason guys if else if, uh, if else if else structure and switch case structure both are logically they, they will be same in some some cases but switch case is faster than this one guys why you can search you can do the self learning activity i am not going into the details i know that reason okay but you have to do if you are interested do the self learning activity i don't want to deviate this session that's why understand almost time is also eight there is a reason guys why switch case is faster than if else if else in other programming languages anyway in our python there is no switch case no need to worry understand guys switch case is faster compared to if else if else you google it understand break and continue are there we use in loops i will tell you okay transfer control i told you right break and continue i will discuss it because java language they have uh, uh, just uh, what did they, what they did was they adapted uh, uh, these 